And when we're talking property investors, right, you're already speaking about um, them hitting the ceiling. What are other challenges that you guys have identified that could um, that could be threats, you know, to investors not being able to grow their property uh, portfolios? So it's so incredibly important with, uh, for us that our investors remain healthy, that they can manage their existing portfolios. That to hear about tonight yes we are talking about um financing your next investment property with absa's future rental income so um, i'm talking to miguel martins who is a portfolio manager um from from absa he's he's an investors uh, absa's home loans division and i really we are really looking forward to having this conversation good evening miguel how are you let me fine thank you so much for having me looking forward to our conversation Thank you so much. If you are joining us for the first time, um, this is on this podcast, we talk each and every single thing around property. Um, you know, we talk about investing, buying, selling, and whatever you are, you're really looking for, if just managing your overall pro uh, property portfolio and ensuring that it grows from strength to strength and just be comes um, better tonight we are talking about you know growing it and um, that's why i was saying that this is something everybody wants to know about because miguel is going to be telling us about um absolute future rental income um or, or this the, is it a product is it um is it a, a way of doing things and what it actually entails so that will be my first question tonight miguel to say what what is it and how, how does one get to to use this um opportunity Oh, fantastic to me and this is a conversation i have regularly with with investors i probably get a call from an investor every other day mm. uh just asking about uh how, how do they get finance um listening to some of their problems and uh and just want to find solutions for them not, not just to maintain the existing portfolios possibly to get into their first property but also but also to grow so um about uh, three and a half years ago one of the challenges we had was that investors were generally purchasing one, maybe two investment properties and then not nothing and, and then not further. And as we got around the table with some with, with quite a few investors nationally, uh, we started to realize that the issue was affordability, that investors were hitting an affordability ceiling. So uh, it got to a point where if they added their, 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 their income as well as the rentals they're receiving um, um, onto their uh, finance applications, that they were actually hitting their max and they weren't able to actually access and grow further than that. What future rental income does, as opposed to using existing rental income, is it allows you, allows an investor uh, who's an existing investor with at least two properties in their portfolio to, to add the expected rental income of the property that they are purchasing uh, to their affordability. So and that's why we call it future rental income because we're adding the expected rental that they're going to be adding, that, that they're going to be earning to their um, income and affordability. This helps most investors just get over that hurdle and just break through that glass ceiling uh, and, 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 and have the ability to finance um, their next uh, property. And when we're talking property investors, right, you're already speaking about um, them hitting the ceiling. What are other challenges that you guys have identified that could um, that could be threats, you know, to investors not being able to grow their property uh, portfolios? So it's so incredibly important with, uh, for us that our investors remain healthy, that they can manage their existing portfolios, that they are mm -hmm. got steady um, tenancies and, and, and they're managing their vacancies and their costs because a healthy investor, financially uh, fit investor uh, is, is a good bank customer and it also allows them to, to then come back and, and, and can continue growing their portfolio. So some of the problems we've seen, and if I split it into managing one, one's portfolio versus growing the portfolio, so the managing portfolio, uh, first and foremost, interest rates. We are in an increasing interest rate environment. We've already seen 
um, a couple of interest rates incre uh, increases of, of 25 basis points, uh, twice I think over the last uh, few months. And we're expecting uh, a few more increases this year and into next year. But um, our, our, the APSA house position is that we, we're expecting interest rates to hit a max of, or at least to hit 8.75% by the end of next year. That's, that's, a, that's an economic forecast and the various different forecasts in the market. But so although we're in that increasing interest rate uh, cycle, at this stage, we still are well below the 10% the that we were at pre-COVID. So although our, our, our financing costs are increasing, uh, still below what we were pre-COVID, but definitely increasing. And of course, you 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 offset that with a with a weak rental uh, market in terms of rental increases. We're only seeing about one point eight percent increasing year on year. Uh, it, it definitely does uh, start to squeeze uh, the, the margins for the investors. And then, la and then thirdly, tenants are under stress. Tenants are under income stress. Um, tenants also fire, have the cars that they're financing, etc. So interest rates increases and other. Another inflationary costs are also uh, stressing tenants. And that just really uh, it requires that investors with the portfolio, whether it's one or two or, or 15 apartments and properties, that uh, we, we do manage them carefully. We do manage them uh, and, 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 and start to think about what are the other shocks that can come through to us and, and try to preempt that. That's on the managing side. On the growth side, of course, as investors, we need to absolutely safeguard uh, our, our credit profiles. We need to ensure that we stay up to date with our payments and that uh, we, we, we keep that credit profile blemish free because as soon as that is tainted, then accessing finance becomes so much more difficulty. Mm. Of course, I spoke about affordability running out. That's a common, um, that's a common um, issue with, with investors. And in that way, it, it, it really is about managing your net rentals, making sure that when you do invest, you invest in good cash flowing properties. You've got the right skills behind you. Uh, our most recent APSA homeowner sentiment index, um, the, the, the results that come out of that was that investors are still positive about the market, but they're tentative. They are careful yeah. about what their next step is. And I think that's just a general theme that we have, for, whether we're managing or whether we're growing our portfolios. Sure. Um, and, you know, with, with something like this that in, assists investors, um, are we talking specifically for residential or um, residential properties or are we talking or all categories of properties? Because as an investor, someone might want to just open up their portfolio for from them just having um, residential to having commercial to having warehouses and even some some land. So does this is this open to to all categories of 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 properties or is it specific for 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 some so so the, the APSA future future rental income is specifically for residential uh, properties uh, we're the only bank that offers it and and and, 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 and get creates ability for investors to extend their affordability with future rental income and that's why we do it with uh, with with existing investors who are already in the market when you start looking at commercial property uh, and the various types Although it's still property, it's a very different market with very different dynamics. Mm. And, and there, um, there, there are variations of uh, future income that are utilized, but that, those are very different strategies and, 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 and the financing in that space is done quite differently. Uh, here, here we're looking at home loan residential investors. And, and there are a lot in terms of uh, market size, there are a lot more residential investors in South Africa than there are commercial investors. So we really are. So th this, this, this income type, this uh, income type that's part of our buy to let uh, product um, really does uh, appeal to the majority of property investors in South Africa. Sure. Um, and now let's talk about the nitty gritties of, of one actually getting into um, or using the service the, that APSA offers. Um, how can someone go into it? And you spoke, you spoke a little bit about that, but um, if I don't have um, the properties that or properties that I've already bought and um, can I buy as a, as a first time owner or, or is it just specifically for people who are going into to the investments? That's number one. And number two, how does one, if, if I'm already in this investment, 
um, um, offering, how can I make sure that um, it, it, it stays lucrative and stays working for me? Because sometimes, you know, things happen, especially when you're investing and with the different mm -hmm. movements in the market, you know, with COVID throwing curveballs into the industry, what, what ends up happening when um, an investment is not panning out as one had projected? No, absolutely. So, so quite, quite, a, quite a few points to be made there. So we partner with uh, two key industry uh, uh, partners, um, the South African Property Investors Network, uh, SAPN, as well as TPN. So um, a, a, as an APSA customer, um, you can access the South African Property Investors Network, which provides education, content, networking with other investors. And we really encourage investors to build um, um, or, or get into networks with other investors because those problems that you mentioned, they can affect they can affect an investor at one point, and that investor now has the ability to share their experiences and the solutions that they found in that particular situation with with other investors. And Sapin, as a key partner of ours, uh, enables investors to come together and to share those learnings and insights. And then another uh, our department, the likes of uh, TPN. TPN is a credit bureau, a tenant credit bureau. And with TPN, investors can, when looking to invest in a particular suburb, they can pull a suburb report. And in that suburb report, TPN includes what is the uh, good standing ratio, how many tenants, what percentage of tenants in that area are paying their rents, what are the average rentals, what are the average vacancies, etc. So some really good tools and reports that uh, TPN um, provides as well as a uh, property rental um, software. So, so really, really, really great products and services from both SAPN and TPN. Armed with that, an investor is in a better position to go out to find a property to ensure that they've run the numbers correctly, they've got the education and some of the, and, and those partners behind them to ensure that they're making good investment decisions and a better position to manage uh, those properties manage the tenants tenants come and go um uh, in the implications of leases uh, um, at the, uh going in inspections exit inspections etc so really a, a wealth of knowledge uh, with with those two partners for, the t for for a property investor to to both grow as well as as manage and, and, and maintain those those portfolios but Running a property portfolio is is not very different from any other business. Many people mm. fall into the trap of thinking it's a it's a hobby or treating it like a hobby or a very easy to do side hustle. It is. It doesn't it doesn't have the same complexity as as uh, running a shop or running a store or any other kind <laughs> of business affair. But if you apply good business principles to your property investment, whether you have one, two, or, or, or ten properties. It will it will uh, come back to you in a multiply effect because you've really applied sound uh, principles and, and and thinking to how you manage your tenants, how you source your tenants, having taking the long view as opposed to taking a short view in many in many situations, and and we really here and part of what I do and part of my role at APSA is really to support investors through that and 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 and, and provide guidance and provide direction, bringing the partners like I've spoken about in terms of, of, of providing better direction and that's nationally sure no thank you so much for that and um i hope anybody who is watching who is who's a potential investor is really gaining a uh, great insight from the conversation that we are having tonight and you spoke some uh, along the lines of you know business compliance and making sure that you are on the right side um also of the law and understanding what it what each business or what the business entails let's talk a little bit about um the tax implications of taking um of, of using a method like this is it is there specific tax impl implications or even legal implications that speak to this particular way of financing or is it just the same as um would as it would have been done traditionally oh no absolutely they, 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 you know you so so we're going to the business of, of property management letting sales potentially etc so you know a lot of this sounds like you as, as as a property manager as an investor you are partly an, an estate agent if, if anything just sourcing of properties you're partly a lettings agent um you know and and, and 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 all the aspects that come with that so it is good to understand at, at, at a workable level the, the implications of the Property Practitioners Act as it just came in, even if it does apply, it does apply to most uh, self-managing landlords. It's good to understand that. 
In terms of the tax uh, uh, side of things, it's incredibly important to have a, a tax accountant that you can go to and you can explain to what you're planning to do, what your portfolio looks like and understand the tax implications of that. All of a sudden you have to include the rental income that you earn onto your tax return. But you can also add the expenses incurred uh, with that property um, on, on, on your tax return. And done correctly, there definitely are some tax advantages um, you know, with, with, with property, but it's definitely got to have the backing and the support from a professional like, like a tax accountant. From a legal perspective, uh, if, if you're, in, you're entering into a contract with, um, with tenants, there's specifically legal uh, frameworks and requirements that that requires. So also good to have that legal support uh, and, and ensuring that you've actually got an attorney who is um, experienced in, in, in property law and in dealing with tenants. There are many attorneys out there that, uh, that provide this kind of services. Our partner at uh, TPN, they provide a very a, an up to date uh, lease agreement that they uh, provide to their to their members and, and and their clients, and utilizing that you can you can have confidence that you are contracting in the best way possible in a way that protects that protects the landlord and their investment as well as is fair to the to the tenant. So various so property investment can seem fairly simplistic and easy to get into initially. But uh, you know, if you want to do it properly, and especially if you're wanting to build a, a portfolio, get to know the rules of the game. Because just like mm. soccer, once you get to know the rules of the game, you know how to bend that ball. You know how to make it work in your favor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. Um, the, the question was really apt and, uh, and on the pulse. Thank you so much. Um, we, have, we have actually reached the tail end of our conversation. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, such great insights. The, uh, uh, our uh, Facebook family is going, is raving. Lebukhan is saying great information. And Shireen is also really just saying that the information that we have received tonight has been so um, worth it. Thank you so much, Miguel. And have a good evening. No, fantastic. I'll go into Facebook and answer some of those questions as I add to some of the uh, viewers Definitely. there. Definitely. Please do that. Please do that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tumi. Take care. Thank you. And that is how we reach the end of our episode tonight. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for staying till this part. And if you missed any part of the conversation for any reason, remember that you can still catch up on it and make sure that you watch from the very beginning. And if you joined us on the Twitter space, special shout out to you for staying till the very end. Until we see you tomorrow, same time, same place, right here on the Private Property Facebook page. It is good night. Thank you.